a Sunday morning. Just a little update before I make my next trip. Um, we'll start with my, uh, my enemies, again, who, let's just put it this way. I, I don't know if they really think anything through where uh, when they, they make their next move or when they try to shoot me down again. Even the people who are, um, let's say, making accusations are trolling me, are still talking. I don't understand what they think. I really don't know what you're thinking. It's just, it's typical harness racing mentality by, let's say, the people who really just aren't educated, who think they are, and are basically, like I said, most of them are proven criminals on one level or another. So I'll give you all an update on what's going on with me. Adjourned, again, but not by me, not by my, my uh, representation. It doesn't make any sense. Usually when you accuse something of uh, somebody of something, wouldn't you know what you accuse them of and you have the proof? Now you need time, hey, whatever. Um, Okay, I don't know what to say. Fine. Again, that's what court's for. But like I said, in court, all the truth comes out. Everything. Everything that actually happened, everything that happened long before any accusations, same stuff I brought into New York City and I brought to Trenton. Whatever, guys. Do what you got to do. But now back again, I got a call again about this Larry Rolla guy who just won't stop. I never watched the entire video of him when he uh, snapped back at me. I didn't realize he brought up my family. And now let me let me clarify here. I have never met Larry Rolla in my life. I have never spoken to Larry Rolla other than the one time on the phone when I was down there moving the horses around with Joe Alberano and he put me on the phone with him in his truck, I, you know, on speakerphone, and we're talking about me going on his podcast. I don't want to go on this fucking podcast. The guy's a nobody. Let's just, let's get this straight here about Larry Rolla, what we know. He actually said that I'm hated by my family, brought up my mother, you talk about a low-life piece of classless garbage. One thing about the boys, put it this way. He talks about the gangsters. They had decorum, and I know this sounds crazy. There was a level of class. One thing that you don't touch and you don't talk about, if you, if you try to portray yourself or you were involved with those people, the families, the families, you don't talk about the families. This piece of garbage who's doing podcasts in his basement at 84 years old to try to make a few pennies, trying to sell people on the idea that he's gonna, he's gonna make a movie, who has spent his entire life earning illegally as a puppet for the real gangsters. All right. He tries to make himself out to be some kind of tough guy. Oh, yeah, they offered me 400, but I said a thousand. Bullshit. Bullshit, Larry. Shut the fuck up. All right. If you want to get it, if you're trying to get a show on Netflix or in your case on Lifetime or even worse, Oxygen, because it's more of a soap opera, what you're talking about. Your existence is a soap opera. You have, like I said, this man, when they handed you a hundred dollars, for every hundred or a thousand dollars to fix a race, go dead, make calls. Like I said, all you were was a puppet on a string. You were the errand boy. And what do you got to show for it now? You live in Lynnhurst, New Jersey, and you're miserable with nothing. What What is your legacy, Larry? All right. But you'll talk about me and you know nothing about me. These guys were making millions and you were making pennies as their bitch. And right now, look at what you're doing. <laughs> Your life and who you're talking about is proof of that. I, I see people saying, are you afraid of Larry? Are you out of your mind? A nobody. 
an absolute nobody, shit shoveling nobody, who all he could do was, instead of winning races, had to fix races. And at the same time was stealing from everybody else and cheating the public. In the real world, you should be in prison with guys like Allard, Banker, um, that whole gang. Altering the outcome of a legalized gambling event. But most likely, you turned on everybody and ratted them out. So now you decide you're going to come after me. Because you didn't like that I said that these horses were in a bad... Everyone has agreed that those horses were in a terrible situation, and the only person responsible for that was the owner. That's the person responsible. But I guess he's a friend of yours, so you're going to make up some bullshit, and you're going to start calling around about Michael Petrelli? Because you got proven and called out for what you are? You never cared about the horses. So... My friends in uh, Creamridge told me that you and his sister made a visit to the farm and you didn't even give them a penny. And I also found out from my friends in Creamridge that nobody's been paying for those horses. Now, is this unexpected? No, because the guy wasn't taking care of his horses when I had to step in. So try to paste, paint me as the villain here. I'm the only one, along with a, a bunch of our group group members and some very good people, and now you're taking full advantage. How? Who the hell are you, Larry Rolla, to show up at that farm unannounced? Are you serious? Who the hell do you think you are? And I also know you ran your mouth. You talk about a classless piece of garbage. Let me just say it like this, without going into details. That woman, Judy Janizelli, is worth more a hundred times more than you are, Larry. Okay? I heard about your big fucking mouth. Man, you are some, you, like I said, no class. That's what you are. Absolutely no class. You've got you, and then you bring in the other person who's been investigated by the federal government for operating a rescue illegally. <laughs> I just, you can't write this crap. Anyway, I'm ready to start my next week. I think everybody's starting to get an idea of what I've been up to. I've been throwing out some hints, but I'm not going to give any specifics because I don't have to, but I can tell you one thing. The things that have happened in the last two weeks between, like I said, walking out of that building in New, in New York City, being told by those people there that what I'm doing is absolutely right, um, what I did in New Jersey, and now I'm actually, I have my hands on, an, on a horse. Maybe one, maybe five, maybe 10. Nobody knows. But I think it'll all come out, it'll come out clearly when I start dropping them in. And if I have any issues, that's gonna make for great stories. It really is. I shouldn't have any issues, and you know, want to know why? I care about the horses, and I've never had a blemish while I was in harness racing. Meanwhile, I'm being judged, and people in the group are being judged as well, by a clown like Larry Rolla, and a guy, the, the owner of those horses, who because of his lack of caring for those animals properly, and I'm not going to go into details, or you don't get a pass because you had issues then you have to do the right thing. I saw the, the way the horses were living. I saw the condition of the horses. And then this jackass, no class, nickel bread, uh, cheated for pennies, and then thinks he's a somebody. The only reason that Larry Roller right now is, is able to talk is because most of the guys that he did business with are either, they've matured into, you know, they've put that life behind them, or they're dead. <laughs> Those families that we knew back then are over with. He says he called around to see, you do whatever you gotta do, Larry. Like I said, nobody knows who Larry Rolla is other than, okay, an errand boy who should have gone to prison. You really, you should have, but you got away with it. And I'm sure we can figure out and surmise why you got away with it. You got one of these, Larry. That's all you are, okay? A working for pennies mouth. Anyway, people, I'll catch you all. I'm going to do a live stream this week that's going to be very eye-opening for everybody again. Peace, everyone.